Hello, everybody. Um, this is my first podcast, so I'm just going to be doing some explaining of what this podcast is kind of about. I'm really excited and also super nervous to get started with this project. Um, it's one that I've been looking for for a while. I feel like something I've been searching for, and um, I'm just excited to finally figure out something that I, I really want to do. Um, And so I'm a little nervous because I will be interviewing a lot of people and I have to set up some things for interviews that I've never done before. So it's a lot of learning and new stuff, so bear with me while I figure all that out. But this podcast is called Once a Zookeeper, Always a Passion because that's exactly my life. Um, I used to be a zookeeper. Um, It's been three years now since I've been. um, And I really struggled with zookeeper identity. I really struggled with who I am and what's next and all that. I willingly left the field. There's a lot of people in the zookeeper field who don't willingly, who, you know, lose their jobs or like right now with coronavirus, you know, they they get laid off and it's, it's really hard because it's like, that's just what they always saw and that was their dream. And it's such a hard field to get into that I feel like they really struggle with that identity. And so I really wanted to start this podcast as a way to talk about that kind of stuff. Like, once a zookeeper, now an entrepreneur. That's me. I never liked that word. I never thought I'd be an entrepreneur. Um, A lot of people called me that, and I just kind of felt like, am I? Like, I kind of just jumped from one thing to the other because I was pregnant. Like, I had this decision I needed to make, and I made it, and I wasn't sure if it was the right one or if it's what I really wanted, but I just went with my gut at the time and so um I just yeah like I was five months pregnant and I was squeezing in and out of exhibits and I just thought to myself man is this is this really what I want and my mom was like come work for me you know you'll figure it out we'll figure out pay we'll figure out all that but there was no like actual like decision on like oh you'll get paid this much and you'll do this because it was like it's whether or not you succeed So if you succeed, then sure, this will be great for you. If not, then we'll figure it out from there. This is just, if you're struggling and you're sad and you're just going through a hard time, it's time to take a step back and figure out what's next. And um, I was working, I was working 10 hour days, but I was commuting for three hours a day. So it was an hour there and an hour and a half home if traffic wasn't horrible. Sometimes traffic was bad. It was two hours home and so... It, yeah, it's just, it was a struggle. So I made that leap and I kind of blacked it out. I made it this thing that it was like, okay, I'm not a zookeeper anymore, but I kind of want to stay in the zookeeper field. So I started Animals Anonymous. Um, I started on a hope and a prayer, really. Like I didn't really have much. I just had my coworkers. I had given them a few shirts that I had made samples of and they said they liked them and it was really cool. And a lot of people put some input in and I just... I started a website. I I didn't even know what I was doing or how I was going to do it. And now five years later, here I am. It's still going. It's still making it. We've donated tens of thousands of dollars all over the world, uh, different conservations. We've helped out a lot of organizations. And it's really hard to be proud of that because I just, it's been a scary roller coaster of like, okay, you're not a zookeeper anymore is all I keep telling myself. But then I'm like, you're a mom, you know, that's so important. And in the whole process of this five years, I had three kids. And so now I'm like, I guess when I decided to be a mom, I decided to go all in. And so it's a bit overwhelming. I've got kids everywhere, I have business to run. Um, The first two years of my kid, we we did... um, We worked right here in my house. And so I had my kid every day. I had my family, my parents. It was their business, their screen printing business that I joined in and started my own company off of. So I had my parents, my brother, my kid, um, my husband. Everything was here in this house. And it was a a bit overwhelming. Um, And I struggled to separate home and business. And I think that's what got me through the not being a keeper is that I just skirted on this stay busy, stay busy, stay busy, grind, hustle, you got this, keep going mentality that I never came up for air. I just was like, don't think about it. Don't think about your past. Don't do that. So it's been five years since then. And I'm just now picking up those feelings and processing them. So it's it's been wild. Um, I actually have a therapist because of it and everything. And that's a lot of what I want to talk about on the podcast. I want to talk about mental health and and just awareness of what goes on. It's 
people don't talk about enough, people talk about it, but not enough of the stress involved with living creatures. I used to go home and not sleep at all because I would be so worried about this animal that had a health problem or this animal that I was worried was too hot or too cold or did I lock that door? You just, it's so stressful. It's this living creature that you're responsible for. It's its their life on the line and you really just want the best for them. I, I put all my heart and soul and passion into those animals and I really made sure that each one of them you know, was well cared for and properly taken care of, you know, changing waters twice a day, feeding them twice a day, some, some animals more, some animals, you know, like you gave enrichment, you gave live fish and crickets and just all different kinds. I, I spent so many days building all this enrichment after work hours, like Googling and searching and Pinteresting all these enrichments to better their lives of these animals. So it's like you really, really put your heart and soul into this to make sure that they have the best lives possible. And it's hard because you kind of forget who you are in the process. You you forget like you forget that you need to be taken care of too. Like, yes, that enrichment was kind of like enrichment for me, but you also need to to remember that like your life and your passions are important. And yes, your passions are those animals, but what else? Like jobs are temporary. Like you can lose your job at any moment. You never know the economy. You never, you know, there's so many factors. So it's so important that we we talk about this, that we talk about that you're more than just that. So I, I really want this podcast to be about that. Once a zookeeper, now a stay-at-home mom. Once a zookeeper, still a zookeeper. Once a zookeeper, now I train animals. You know, just there's so many things. There's so many things you're good at. I learned from from my zookeeping jobs that I love education. I love educating people. I love the face of children and adults who, who learn from what I have to say about these animals. And I love being able to teach people about animals that they don't know about. And that's exactly why Animals Anonymous came about. I was like, let's put a face to the anonymous animals. Like nobody knew what okapis were and pangolins and things. And and the more you see that on a shirt and hey, what's what's on your shirt? Or hey, what's that? Can you tell me more? Or, what are you even selling? It looks just like a blob to me, um, is the whole point. It's all about awareness and, and raising this awareness. And it was really important to me to raise awareness about zoos and aquariums because so many people are like, oh, zoos, cages. And that's not the fact. That's not, that's not really, I see, I, I've been there. I've been at zoos, I've been in aquariums and I've seen the passion that the people working there have for these animals and the love and the care that they put into it. And it's so much more than that. Like you can't just put the animals in the wild and expect them to be happy and free when the wild is not exactly the safest place to be. I mean, there's so much that goes in and so many factors. And I want this whole podcast to be just wrapped around that and just enveloped in these zookeepers, people who want to be zookeepers, you know, Aquarius, things like that. I want, I want people who who put their heart and passion into traveling the world for animals, who who put their heart and passion into donating or doing what they can. Like, for instance, even just buying a shirt and, and the money going towards that because that's what you feel strongly about. So that's what I feel strongly about and that's what I'm going to make this podcast about. So I am super excited. I'm going to start figuring out some great questions to ask people. I'm going to start diving in deep. I really want to make some artwork. So like once a keeper, once a zookeeper, now a mom, maybe some cool artwork with moms and bellies. I don't know, maybe baby animals, just different things. I have all these ideas. I came out with one that was once a zookeeper, always an ambassador for animals. Somebody gave me the idea and I loved it because that's so true. And it's not that you're not a zookeeper anymore. It's that you did it or you want to get back into it or that you're still doing it. There's just so much. I'm so excited to start this. I don't know if you can tell by all my excitement. I just jammed a whole bunch of words into 10 minutes. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to talk about. And I just want to thank you guys for following along with me and being on this wild ride. Um, I'm excited to see where my interviews take me. I'm excited to see my first interviews and bear with me through the nervousness. I'm a really big introvert and this has been a new thing for me and I'm excited for it. I'm excited to get out of my comfort zone. I'm excited to get out of the box and just start nitpicking people's minds and why they do what they do and where their passion started. Like, I love that question of like, um, when did that spark happen? Like when you were younger, like what was it that happened? Like when I was little, um, I had this, 
uh, well, first of all, I had stray cats that I spayed and took care of and everything else like that. You know, it just, you just, this passion just grows and grows. I had stuffed animals that all had names and they talked to me, you know, <laughs> not that I'm sounding crazy, but one day there was this really bad storm and I stayed up all night. It was a very scary storm. I woke up in the morning and these cats were playing with these things in the yard and they happened to be baby squirrels. And I just panicked i was like no save all the baby squirrels and so we're like making like boxes and sticking the boxes in the tree because we did research that the mom will come back and after hours no mother i started calling every wildlife rehabber i could and trying to get a hold of anybody and couldn't and i was like i have to feed it or figure out how to feed it before it dies so then i end up feeding it i'm still calling wildlife rehabbers come to find out they probably are just packed full of squirrels and animals that have fallen out of trees from this massive storm and so we ended up raising it. Don't, don't, don't quote me on that because I'm pretty sure that that is not allowed. But I was probably about, I don't know, 14, 15 years old, raised this little squirrel, uh, named him Lucky, brought him outside every day in the sun. And then eventually he just took off one day. And then I would see him every so often in the trees, gosh, for about two years after that until I moved. And that's just like, that is where my passion started. And I was like, this is it. I want to raise baby animals, I want to help, I want to do, I want to be a wildlife rehabber, I want to do all these cool things. So I found something near me, started an internship, and literally my passion just bloomed and blossomed from there. Granted, Steve Irwin, Jeff Corr, and the Crap Brothers, the Boomafoo, uh, Bendy, oh my gosh, Bendy, I love her, um, all got in my head on TV and I just, I was so inspired. I wanted to be a, a real life Irwin, you know? and. And so I want to talk to people about what what sparked that for them, what what made that happen for them, and um, what passions they have. Do they have any animals at home? Because I know like a lot of zookeepers work so many hours and spend so much time taking care of animals at work that a lot of them don't have animals at home because it's stressful. So I have so many questions and so many things I want to find out. Um, especially for people who are not zookeepers or trying to get in the field too. I want to learn about what, what, what makes them, what's that drive? What do they want? What do they want out of it? What do they expect? Like, what do they wish their career would be like? What's their ultimate goal? I remember after my internship, um, I wanted to work at the Duke Lemur Center because I had worked with lemurs and raised lemurs and fell in love with lemurs. But then I had gotten suddenly fired and wasn't was told I couldn't say goodbye to a lemur that I had. And so I literally took that dream and hit it as far down as I could because I was like, I never want to look at lemurs again. I'm so heartbroken. And so it's so weird how our goals and dreams and passions change. My favorite animal is still a lemur. Um, I got to work with three-toed sloths even and I was obsessed with them. And I would tell people that that's my favorite email. E email. My favorite animal, but in the back of my head, I always had these lemurs there. So I just, I'm interested to hear people's stories and what, what's going on with them and what's happening with them. And, and literally there's, it's going to get hard sometimes. There's going to be some dark stuff and some sadness and some tragedy and, and things people don't expect. And I want this to be real life. I want people to see that. I want people to see that it's not always happiness and, and rainbows and fluffy critters. It's also bites and poop and, you know, long nights and hard days and frozen locks. And, you know, it's it's breaking up ice water in the middle of winter and it's almost dying of a heat stroke in the summertime. So... Bear with me and enjoy this time with me and I'm so excited to interview each and every different unique person. I'm just really excited. So thank you guys for tuning in. Um, feel free to support all you want. I also am going to put this on Patreon to help gain some support and see if I can get some funds to help me get the products I need to start a podcast and things. So love you guys. Thank you for everything and I really appreciate you. Have a great day. You too.